Welcome back to the Game Collection. The end of summer is upon us, and so too is the end of the mother of all summers. This summer, we've taken a close look at the many ways to play Mother 1, returned to my roots by giving Earthbound a review a hundred episodes later, and have navigated the long and complex history of Mother 3's arduous journey to the West, and why I don't think we're going to see an official localization. There's still a little time left before the leaves start changing colors though, so maybe we can squeeze in a bit more fun. I am Super Derek, and this is Mother 3. Mother is Nintendo's third and, as of yet, final entry in the Mother series. The game never came out in the United States, officially speaking, and, well, the story of how we eventually did get to play it is an intricate and fascinating story that I've already covered in another video, so I won't go into that here. In the jump from Mother 1 to Earthbound, the stories don't seem to be overtly connected to one another, almost like Earthbound was a soft reboot of Mother 1. However, Mother 3 definitely takes place sometime after the events of Earthbound, which we can piece together from the recurring characters between the titles. So while you could easily enjoy Earthbound without having played Mother 1, and you could still technically enjoy Mother 3 without having played Earthbound, you would likely miss out on a lot of little nods to Earthbound, so I think playing Earthbound first would be my recommendation. And while we're on the topic of comparing the two titles, I should also warn you that the games are tonally and thematically quite a bit different. Earthbound feels carefree. It only gets kind of dark when you start digging past the surface level. Mother 3, on the other hand, is a tragic story. The story of Mother 3 starts off following a small family of two boys, Klaus and Lucas, and their parents, Flint and Hinawa. But the story that Mother 3 tells is actually a bit larger than that. Over the course of several chapters, Mother 3 documents the changes to a peaceful rural town as it is introduced to the concept of money and computers by an outside force and how the world gradually changes and becomes more urban and traditions and family structures are disrupted. Tragedy strikes early in the game, and throughout the rest of the game, the hits just keep coming. New characters are gradually introduced, including Boney, the family dog, Duster, a thief with a limp, Kumatora, the princess of a lost kingdom, and Salsa, the monkey. The story of Mother 3 makes bold decisions early on and sets the stage for an experience that you might not have expected on the heels of Earthbound. A toy lets you know right away that this is not Earthbound 2. Everything from the rural setting, chapter-based story progression, adult party members, and frankly depressing storyline are a toy's way of telling you to check your expectations at the door because he will not be pigeonholed into making the same game a third time. At least, that's my interpretation. If a toy is going to be making another game for his fans, it's going to be a story that he wants to tell, even if that story might not be the happy one we want to hear. The overarching story of Mother 3 was unlike anything I had experienced in a JRPG up to that point when I had first played it years ago, and it completely subverted every expectation that I had for a follow-up of Earthbound, so much so that I did in fact find it off-putting. Imagine playing your second ever Pokemon game and it turns out it's Shin Megami Tensei Nocturne instead. What, you want Charmander? Nope. Here's Mara instead. Life sucks, have fun, kid. However, after sticking to it for a while, you will find some things did stay the same. Character dialogue is witty and feels naturally awkward at times to comedic effect, and has that familiar charm that is a toy's humor and style. If you go into Mother 3 without expecting Earthbound 2, which I understood from my most recent playthrough, you'll definitely have a fantastic time as long as you're emotionally prepared, because have I mentioned yet that this entire game is a bit of a downer? 
The main characters in Mother 3 were all fairly static. There wasn't really a whole lot of character progression or growth from the start to the end of the game. Ironically, it's the supporting characters found throughout the town of Tazmili that changed dramatically over the course of the game, across the several chapters as the world changes and urbanizes as people start to understand and want money and shifts from a nearly commune structure toward consumerism and self-absorption. Mechanically, Mother 3 plays similarly to Earthbound for the most part, except during combat there is also a rhythm-based component with which you can increase the damage dealt by melee attacks by tapping along with the beat of the song playing during combat. Despite being okay with rhythm-based games and other timing-based games such as Super Mario RPG, Legend of Dragoon, and Shadow Hearts, getting the extra damage bonuses was pretty tricky for me to get consistently, as it seems the game has little tolerance for slop. Luckily, the bonus damage that you deal rolls off pretty quickly the further into the combos you go, so if you at least get the first couple of extra hits, you've dealt the vast majority of the damage that you could have inflicted anyway. Most party members have some unique abilities that they can utilize during combat, whether that's Boney's sense of smell that can help you detect enemy weaknesses, or secret thief skills that Duster can use to debuff enemies, or even isolate the beats of the game music to help you rack up combos, everyone feels unique. Lucas and Kumatora are unique in that they are the only two characters in the game who have the ability to use psychic powers, such as casting healing abilities or damaging enemies with elemental abilities. When Lucas or Kumatora are about to learn a new ability, they break out into a fever, preventing them from being able to dash, and there's not really much you can do about it until the fever breaks. Itoi felt like this would help symbolize personal growth through adversity. Speaking of running, exploration between locations again takes place on the same scale at which you would explore a town. There's no zoomed out or overworld map to navigate around on, so this entire story does only take place on a few islands after all. But exploration is sped up quite a bit now because characters are able to dash around, and you're not restricted to using it outdoors or outside of a town or anything like that either. There are also other quicker travel methods available such as taking a train and flying around in a pork bean and so on. I went pretty far into detail about the problem with Earthbound's inventory system during that review, and in Mother 3 I can at least say that things do appear to be improved at least somewhat. Key items now have a dedicated pocket, reducing the amount of item shuffling that you need to do dramatically, but for the most part, if the inventory system was a deal breaker in Earthbound, then Mother 3 likely won't fare a whole lot better in your eyes. Visually though, Mother 3 is gorgeous. The art style established in earlier titles is further refined upon, featuring cartoon-like character sprites outlined in black, but now blown up and displayed in further detail. The colors are bright and vibrant thanks to the expanded Game Boy Advance color palette. The game designers didn't simply opt to reuse assets from Earthbound even though it could have sufficed. Instead, they wanted to push the visual style even further and it shows, punctuated with moments of fluid character animations during some cutscenes. However, an area of the game not done any favors by the Game Boy Advance hardware is the music, which is truly fantastically composed, unfortunately the game audio suffers from digital compression, essentially giving the entire game a bit of a high noise floor or what sounds like a quiet hiss throughout the game, almost as if you're listening to the game's soundtrack on a late 90s Napster MP3 rip at 32 kilobits per second, or to put it another way, the digital audio equivalent of JPEG artifacting. The music itself is quite phenomenal though and well worth a listen if you can find a remastered version to listen to, which is what I've been using for the majority of this review. But if you want to hear what the actual hardware sounds like, well, uh, give this a listen. And as we covered in my History of Mother 3 video, the game is currently only available to play in English using the fan translation created by Tomato and Crew, and the future prospects of a Western release are rather grim in my estimation. The most recent version of the patch actually came out just earlier this year, version 1.3, so if you decide to give Mother 3 a go, 
make sure you're playing that release which features a plethora of translation patch bug fixes and bug fixes for the original Japanese release of the game. For me, Mother 3 was unable to dethrone Earthbound as my favorite Mother game, but I can hardly fault the game for being unable to compete with my nostalgia for Earthbound. Plus, to be totally honest, I just kind of prefer the infectious upbeat tone of Earthbound. But Mother 3 is a fine title in its own right that has garnered a cult following to rival Earthbound's. And it has the guts to break your heart and go out on new limbs and try to be something more than just a sequel to Earthbound. It's a work of literature hidden inside of a video game. So of course, Mother 3 has earned itself a spot in the Game Collection. The Game Collection is a viewer-supported show. If you enjoyed this review, please consider subscribing. For live streams of my playthroughs, follow me on Twitch. And thank you for watching.